So I'm going to describe the general technique right now of the process we just did. So we start out a n d n plus a n minus one d n minus one plus etc etc a zero. So step one factor. So the a n will factor out, and you'll be left with d minus r one d minus r two d minus r n. These are the roots. Uh, these R's are the roots of the polynomial above. So we're left with this. So step one, get the AN out of there. So divide by AN. So we got QX over AN. And we're going to let everything except the outermost derivative, uh, we let that equal to u. Uh, I'm going to set this equal to u1 because we're about to do the same thing uh, for the next lower order. So we're going to solve for what I underlined. by setting u1 equal to d minus r2 d minus rn y. And then you're going to solve <coughs> d minus r1u equals qx over an Solve this for, oh, I called it U1. Solve for U1. So you're going to solve for U1. Which will be of the form U1 equals YC plus YP. Generally, it'll be C1 e to the R1x plus yp. Then you put it back together. Yeah, software, okay. All right, so basically we're knocking out, the first one we're knocking out is this D minus R1. So we're kind of knocking them out from the left, not from the right. So we're not solving, we're not going to basically solve for what I have circled at first. Well, we're actually solving for that, but we're not applying these derivative operators to y. What we're really solving for is to get rid of d minus r1. That's really the first one that we treat. So we put it back together. We're going to have d minus r2. That r1, d minus r1 is going to have disappeared. d minus rn y equals u1. And of course the U1 is the what we just got right there. So when you put it back together, D minus R2, D minus R3, D 
minus R N Y, you're going to let everything except the outermost operator be U2. So this inner part will be, oops, let U2 equal D minus R3, D minus R N Y. <coughs> Then you have D minus R2, U2 equals U1, and you solve for U2. Then you're going to plug back in. D minus R3. Oops. D minus Rn. Y equals U2. So that will take care of the first two linear operators, and you just repeat the process until you have no more left. So for these homeworks, page 266, 13, 14, 15, 19, 20, 21, etc. So those are good practice problems right there. So I'm planning to put one of these problems on your midterm. Yeah, I may shorten it a little bit, so maybe it's a originally a degree four, I'll shorten it to a degree two or three, something like that, but expect one of these problems on your midterm. I had a degree three, two, that and a half. Yeah, I was talking a lot, and you guys were asking questions. It probably won't happen during your midterm. So we're going to get into inverse operators now. So we saw how to knock out operators carefully by basically doing a degree one ODE and then solve that and then kind of shift it over, solved another degree one, another degree one, another degree one. So what we're going to do next is invert these operators. So we're going to uh, shortcut here in this section we write YP um, we are considering only the particular solution with YC equals zero Considering only a particular solution with yc equals zero. Normally, y is yp plus yc, the particular plus the general. <coughs> so basically, all of our constants will be zero. That's going to equal zero, so it won't appear. So, for a fast example, uh, were you copying down all the notes you couldn't get from the last section? So what? So you can always look at these online too. Oh you can't yeah. copy them down, and most everything is in the book too. All right. So if general solution.
to the ODE. Oops. Or if the general solution is y equals negative x squared minus 2x plus c1 ex plus c2 e to the negative x, what we're going to do is throw away the constant parts. So we're going to take yp, the particular, to be discarding the constants. So we're going to throw away those constants right there. So basically thinking of yp as the least general solution. Okay, so now we can get into the algebra of operators. So we're going to look at the inverse operator, which will be P inverse of D. Of course, you can write it as the reciprocal if you'd like. You can also write it as P of D inverse. Just writing this down, what this tells you is that the inverse is going to act like a reciprocal. Normally with functions, when we write negative first power, we mean inverse. We don't mean reciprocal. But what I just wrote down is basically both. There's an inverse notation on the left and a reciprocal notation in the middle. So what that means is the inverse is going to act just like the reciprocal. Uh, functionally, how do these look? So how do they function? P inverse D operating on some function Q of X will equal Y of P. That's the same as, I'm going to move the operator to the other side. As the inverse. So what's going on? We have this P inverse of D. We move it to the other side as the inverse operator. This is the way inverse functions work right here. You just bring it to the other side of the equation as the opposite or the inverse. <coughs> so any questions on that functional notation right there? What does a one over derivative mean? Oh, we'll find out. Uh, the only intuition you should have right now is it's going to mean something like the antiderivative, which doesn't look like a fraction. But there is some fractionist going on behind the scenes. So there's some weird stuff that's going to happen. Uh, if I use good old day notation, this is basically a f of x equals y is the same as x equals f inverse of y. So if I use old notation, just regular function notation, where inputs are x, outputs are y, this is what it looks like. So that's all that's going on. Things just look a little more complicated. So let's do an example. Before I've told you anything other than how to use it functionally, we're going to compute this example here. So here's our operator. I want the inverse operator on x. We're going to use the uh, functional definition. So we use the functional description above. All right, first of all, I don't have an equation. I have an expression. So what I'm going to do is just set this equal to y. And then I'm going to move the operator to the other side. So y equals this stuff. How do I move the operator to the left side? You just move it over and make the power not negative? Well, yep, so not negative. just invert it, basically. So it moves over, 
as d squared minus 3d plus 2, y equals x. So that's how we move it to the other side. You know how to apply this derivative operator now. This is just like last section. So apply this, it should be pretty quick. It should be extremely quick because it's operating on the function y. So we got y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals x. So any questions on what I've done so far? What am I really... A question. What's the point of separating the d and the y when eventually you're just going to have it as y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals x? Like what's the point of basically factoring out y and just setting the derivatives as d squared or d... Uh, so I'm trying to find what I underline with a squiggle. I don't know how to do it. So I'm turning it into a problem that I can answer. So the problem I can't answer is on the bottom of the board now. That's a constant coefficient linear ODE that we know how to solve, right? You've seen this type of problem lots of times. So solve it. You could solve it if you want to get fancy. I think it's d minus 1, d minus 2. y equals x. You don't have to solve it the way I just showed you, but if you want to solve it this way. I'm only going to give you three minutes to solve for y. So, however you want to do it. y equals e to the mx is a very reasonable way to go. But this type of ODE you've solved lots of times. And if you're really stuck, it's a good time to ask for help. You should have your cheat sheet out. A lot more effective than Pop-Tarts. Not as effective as coffee. Projector was working earlier, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. I think the screen just turned off. I'm going to stop the recording and start it again. I'm worried.